an industry which happens to be one of the largest employers in the country, an industry that has been constantly and tremendously growing over the last decade or so. I'm talking about the Indian IT industry. Today on Education Dialogues, I have with me uh, Mr. R. Chandrasekhar, President NASCOM. Sir, thank you so much for talking to us. I'll begin by asking you, how would you say the IT industry has grown over the last decade or so? Uh, the industry uh, has uh, grown tremendously in terms of its uh, reach. Uh, apart from the fact that it's now a $132 billion industry. 146 if you include e-commerce uh, in that. Uh, so, 132 uh, billion dollar industry, 14 billion dollars in e-commerce and out of the 132 billion, more than uh, 99 billion is uh, actually export and it's to 80 countries across the world. So, this is truly, truly global, the industry. To what extent is the Indian IT industry ready for a digital revolution and what are the kind of gaps that need to be filled in this sector? It's not easy, uh, much less uh, automatic, uh, for people to be prepared for that uh, change or to really uh, be uh, ready with everything that is needed yeah. to manage that change. Uh, but this industry has a very, very important role in that change, which is that in some senses it is the uh, I, I, it, it is actually the agent of that change. So, in a lot of cases, if uh, you want to actually drive this change, then you have to know enough about the technologies and you also need to know a little bit about that domain. The second thing is that in a transition like this, you also need to be able to communicate because uh, preparing people for that change and understanding how they would like to change and understanding, uh, you know, in what manner they could most benefit from that change. So these skills, uh, as uh, would be obvious from uh, what I've just said, are slightly more multidimensional than, uh, you know, uh, the conventional uh, thinking that there will be a unidimensional uh, skill required. I need to know Java or C++ or I need to know this programming and then you know, I just get into a job and do the job. So that's a big qualitative shift and getting ready with that kind of workforce is a challenge all across the world uh, as it is in India as well. So apart from the skills that you just mentioned right now, what else is the industry expecting from the future generations to come? Young people almost by definition question the status quo. If you didn't question the status quo, then you should revisit your youth. <laughs> and, but this is a great way of actually changing the status quo for the better, using the power of modern technology. But there is one further step, which uh, increasingly uh, younger uh, and more imaginative and more energetic uh, people uh, are looking at, is to go down the entrepreneurship route yes. and go down the innovation route and say, look, I have this great idea and I'm not waiting for some company to hire me to do this. I'm actually going to go out and create that product myself. Yeah. I'm going to go out and make this happen and I'm going to actually make my niche yeah. in this particular segment. Yeah. You know, what's more interesting is that some of the best and brightest minds are headed in this direction yeah. as opposed to the past where the brightest always wanted to get, you know, whatever was the best paid job in the government at one point in time, in the private sector at another point in time, or in, you know, research or academic institutions uh, across the world at some other point in time. This is a very big shift because it's a big change from the traditional uh, Indian mindset or the traditional middle class mindset, which is, which is a little more, you know, averse to risk taking and uh, likes to play it safe. So I think we are witnessing a very new uh, development and a very new force which has been unleashed in our society. Entrepreneurship is another area where NASCOM is keen to focus on. Tell us about the kind of plans that you have to promote entrepreneurship in the country. Well, uh, NASCOM has for the last uh, couple of years been running a program which was launched uh, two years ago called the 10,000 Startups Program. Yeah. 
which was aimed at creating 10,000 startups by, uh, by 2025 in about 10 years time. Uh, and that program has been uh, extremely successful. It involves helping entrepreneurs, not just in terms of helping them to mobilize uh, uh, funding from venture capitalists and uh, angel investors, but also to get uh, mentorship, to get uh, space in the form of uh, incubation or uh, warehouse uh, space, and uh, which also allowed a lot of such young people to come together where uh, there was a lot of informal learning from each other. Uh, apart from that, you know, we have also been working with a number of state governments because as all of us know, India is a country of subcontinental proportions and uh, in a country like this entrepreneurial spirit, which has been a very traditional Indian virtue, yeah. is spread all across the country and it is too much to expect that in a country of India's size, all of them will flock to one location. Yeah. Uh, so over a period of time, it is uh, our effort to uh, spread and replicate some of these uh, uh, facilities so that entrepreneurship can find an outlet closer home, uh, you know, where people have the uh, comfort of being close to their home, but also have all the support uh, that I just uh, talked about. So India is on the road ahead to becoming one of the youngest nations in the world and keeping in mind the n number of jobs the IT industry is giving to all of these youngsters and also taking into account the engineers, the number of engineers graduating every year and IT being their first preference for jobs, what do you think? Will there be enough room for everyone in years to come? I think uh, there are two ways of looking at this. One is in terms of, you know, how many jobs does the industry provide? And that's a significant number. For example, uh, last year, the industry provided more than uh, 200,000 jobs uh, to, the, uh, to people in the country. But it can be argued that 250,000 or 200,000 is a big number. But in a country with 1.2 billion people, that's still a very small number. So the more important question is not what is the direct employment which it can create, but what is the indirect employment which it generates. If you look at the IT sector, uh, there are uh, well uh, uh, you know, researched statistics which show that uh, there is a indirect employment of 3 is to 1 or 4 is to 1 for every one direct employment that is created. This is in the form of you know, construction industry or, uh, or in the real estate sector or in the entertainment sector or in the uh, you know, uh, sort of catering and restaurants and all that kind of stuff. But there is yet another uh, impact, which is perhaps even more, uh, 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 you know, which is much bigger in terms of its impact. And that is the kind of multiplier effect that it has on the economy. And I think whether it is uh, in the area of IT or in telecom, we should really be targeting that multiplier and doing whatever we can to get there uh, as quickly as possible and to move in that direction uh, to create these opportunities. My final question, in years to come, how do you see the industry growing and what really is it expecting from India's young? Uh, I think that uh, as the industry today uh, continues its march globally and as the Indian IT industry uh, continues to be recognized as a major engine of uh, you know uh, the digital world across uh, the entire globe and as the country continues to become younger and younger yes. relative to other countries uh, it's very important for us to fully appreciate the significance of the role that we are playing globally it's a tremendous range of opportunities which uh, which are there there are huge challenges also in the, in the uh, process, uh, which uh, I think I should not try to uh, present just a very rosy picture. There are uh, challenges, but I do think that as a country, we have the ability to overcome those challenges and we have the resource uh, pool, at least in terms of raw uh, talent to actually uh, do what is, what is required. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Okay.